everyone. Welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. I am Bonnie Krebs, creator of Watercolor the Art Impressions Way, and we are switching gears this week. So we've been on fall for the last few weeks, and now it's time to switch it up, and we are moving into winter. So this week's uh, project is a snowy project and a Christmas one. So you can choose to add this little Christmas element or you can just make this little uh, barn just be snowy all on its own. So that's up to you. Okay, so let's get started. We are going to use just a couple of things this time. This is a really simple project, so it only requires a few stamps. So we're going to use the barn. This is the barn from the old barn set and the fence. We're going to use this little fence. In addition, we're going to use this little tree that comes in Watercolor Series 6. And then in the wooden door set, we're going to use the little wreath right here. Okay, so just those four stamps. And this time, we don't need anything from the foliage and flower set because we are in winter and we're doing a snowy scene. So we don't need anything from there. In addition, also, we're going to use some masking fluid. So I'm going to use the Art Masking Fluid. This is a mask pen. So it's called a Molotov. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but that's how I pronounce it. A pump marker. And this is masking fluid. So it's like a liquid mask. And I'll show you how to do that. That's how we're going to get the snow in the background. See the little white areas back there? That's protecting the white areas so that we can get this snowy scene. Okay, so let's get started. Just like every other project, we're gonna start with a basic image. So we want this to be snowy so it's cool. So we're not gonna use sepia all by itself. We're gonna use a blue. So this is the African violet and we're gonna ink this up. And what we wanna do now is be careful not to get these details in the roof. We don't want these slat lines showing the roof because we wanna show a snowy roof. So we're just gonna sort of avoid those lines and just come around all the way around here. So get the outline, just don't get the detail of the, um, of the roof. So come down this way, we're gonna ink all of this up here, make sure you get the windows and the doorway, all of that, just not the detail. And now we're gonna stamp it off. So we're gonna stamp it off onto a separate piece of paper. You can use cardstock or you can use watercolor paper. And now we're gonna ink it again. And we're gonna go back over it now with a sepia. This is gonna give us that old rustic white that we're looking for. So again, remember, don't ink those, um, those details on the roof. These things are so versatile because you can do just that. It's easy to change the seasons out. It's fun and it makes the stamp um, way more versatile. Okay, so I think we've got this all on here. And I'm gonna stamp it off one more time because I want the image to be sort of soft and shadowy. So I don't want too much ink on here and you can see how vibrant that ink is. You can also see if you've missed a spot. So it looks like I've missed a little bit here on the, on the top. Okay, so now I'm gonna stamp it on my paper. So right in the middle. And don't use too heavy of a hand, just a really soft hand, a really even pressure, and just keep that image light. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the next step, and that is adding water to the image. So we're gonna dip our brush in water, pinch it off, and begin to pull the color out of the lines. This is always the same. So pull that color out. This is the shadowy side, so this can all be solid this under here as well. And you can see how this all starts to take shape. I love this simple little barn. Put a little color underneath here. In the windows, here's that spot I missed. And then get some color into the, into the windows. We can come back and uh, sort of deal with that in a little bit. Okay, so we've got the basic part done here. So now I'm gonna take my fine tip. This is my number 86, and I'm gonna really darken in these windows. So just take that fine tip. If, you, if you're using a Marvy, uh, the Marvy fine tips are so tiny, they're really great to use, uh, but any fine tip is gonna work. Okay, so really darken this in here. And I usually just make a few little lines like this, and then I hit it again with my brush and just pull that color over. Okay, just like so. We can put a little of this color now in the side, on the side. 
Make sure this is really dark in here in this shadow. That's what makes it look three dimensional is when you get that contrast between the light and the dark. It makes a huge difference. Okay, and you can see we now have a smooth roof here, so we're not showing any, um, any lines from the roof. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of this African Violet. So this is African Violet on my palette, and I'm just gonna come along next to the outline of the roof, and I'm just gonna make a brush stroke and bring that all the way around. And you can see how that kind of lifts the roof up. That's what's gonna give us our snowy, our snowy roof, same with this little area. And over here, we're just gonna make a little snowy line right on the top. Okay, just like that. See how that just changed everything? Come back under here again and really darken that underneath the eaves. That's gonna really, really be dark. Okay, looks pretty good. So now let's move on to the next step. So the next step is to add our masking fluid. So this is our little mask pen. And you, to get this started, you just pump this tip. You just pump it and the, um, the liquid will come out. And you just wanna make a few little dots. This is where the snow is gonna be, so just make a few little dots. You can make these as big as you want. I usually try to keep them pretty small. Just like that. And while that's drying, we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, so then we're gonna take the little wreath, this is the little wreath, and we're gonna stamp it right in front of this barn. So I'm gonna use my positioner because I wanna make sure that I get this in the right place. So I'm gonna place that inside the corner of the T square here, just like this. And I'm going to ink my wreath. and then stamp that right in the corner like this. Okay, and this is gonna go right up in front of the barn, just like this. So kind of right under that window, uh, right between the door, uh, the door opening and that window. And I wanna make sure I don't touch my, actually, let's just pause here for a second and wait till this masking fluid dries and then I will come right back. Hi everyone, I'm back and now my masking fluid has dried and so I've been able to stamp my little wreath right here in the front of the barn. So let's add some water to that now. Remember you're inking the lines. So try to leave these white areas in here. Don't just ink this all uh, solid so that it looks like you have a, a sort of a green tire. Uh, just keep all these little areas open and just barely touch it with your brush. This is why a fine tip brush is really important so that you get those tiny little areas. Okay, so we've got that done. Let's add a little red now to this. So this is just a, a basic red and we're gonna add some little berries here. Just sort of freehand these in here. A few little red dots in here. Super cute. And if you want to really stretch yourself, you can, you don't have to, but you can add a little ribbon in here. This is really easy to do. Three lines, one, two, three, two loops, two loops, and two more lines. And then just darken them in. Just like that. We've got a little ribbon blowing in the wind. Okay, so now let's move on to the next step. Now here's where I really want you to stretch yourself. We're gonna do something freehand, and I know you can do it. It's not hard. So we're gonna start with this with the sepia pen, and we're gonna use the fine tip, and we're gonna make one line down the center of the wreath. One line, just like this, all the way down, oh, probably a quarter of an inch or so. Now we're gonna make another one on the side, and another one on the side, and just bring those lines all the way down and then do another couple right in between. Okay, so we've just made a fence post here. Super easy. We're gonna hit this now with our brush and soften those lines, just like we would if it were stamped. Okay, so now one more step. We're gonna make a little shadow under here because this wreath is hanging on this post. So we wanna put a little shadow, just a little blue. This is the 86 African Violet and we just put a little bit of a shadow here. Okay, 
So now let's move on. See, that wasn't hard. I knew you could do it. Okay, we're gonna move on now and we're gonna use the fence. So we're gonna sort of connect the fence now to this fence post. And we're gonna use the, um, we're gonna use the positioner. We wanna make sure that we get this fence in the right place and that we use as much of it as we need. So we don't need this whole thing. It's too big and we just need this back part. So let's ink the whole thing and just sort of see what we have here. So I'm inking this all with the sepia. And I'm going to stamp it now with my stamp positioner. Okay, so let's move it over here. Now we're just, we're, we don't need this first post here. We actually only need these three, these three small little posts, and we don't need this line back here. So we're just gonna sort of put this up right underneath the barn. It should, it should sit right up underneath the image. So this little post here is directly below this little window. Set it right up there. Put the positioner back in place, the little T-square back in place. And now we're gonna clean this off and make sure that we only ink the parts that we need to ink. Okay, so remember just these three little posts, nothing over here and not this little piece right here. So let's just ink that up and leave those other little pieces off. Okay, so now we're gonna stamp this in here right next to our post that we just created. And now we have this little continuing fence. Take your fine tip now and just make a little line to connect it. And see, you've just freehanded this extra post in this fence. How cute is that? If you, now that you're really brave and you're really confident, you can make a few more little posts back here if you want to. Just like so. Okay, so now let's add some water. Dip our brush. And we're gonna pull this color now out of the lines. And let's come in here now in between so that it doesn't look like this is floating. And we're gonna take a little bit of blue now from our um, palette and just come under here just like this, just with a little blue line. Don't overthink it, don't overdo it, just add a little splash of blue right underneath. Okay, so let's brush in the sky now. So we've got our masking fluids, we've protected these little tiny areas, so now we're gonna do a sky. And in order to make things look really white, it's really good to surround it with color. So let's make a dark sky here. So I'm taking this blue, this is just the African violet, and I'm gonna really brush in over the top now of this masking fluid, of these little dots. And this is gonna protect our white areas. Dip my brush, take a little more color. Try to stay away from the lines of the barn. Don't come right up against there unless you know, if you, if you accidentally do, that's okay. Get a little more color on here. And you can really make this dark. Makes it look like a dark winter sky or an evening sky. Super cute, just keep brushing this color on. And we'll just cover all of these areas. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's take our fine tip now. We're just about finished. And we're gonna just put a few little details in here. Just take your fine tip now and just make a few little uh, snowy lines. You can take your, um, your pen now and sort of bring your your little driveway around. And now just like we did with the roof, we're gonna make a little um, a little bank of color right along here. And you see how that pops that driveway up? Just like magic. Put a little color in here. There we go, we're getting about finished. So let's take our masking fluid off now 
and this just rubs off. So just take your finger and just kind of rub this all off. And we can see our cute snowflakes in the background. And now let's do one more thing. Let's put our little uh, winter trees in the back. And that's this little guy right here. And I'm just gonna use the blue. I want them to kind of be faded out in the background. So I'm going to stamp this one off as well. I don't want this too dark. Because this is our focal point right here. So we don't wanna just steal that focal point with something else. Put a little, couple of little trees back here. Let's do the same again. Stamp this off and a couple more back here. So we've got our little snowy scene, super cute. Make sure you sign and date. We'll load this up with glitter. I do this all the time, especially when it comes to these snowy scenes. They're so cute. A wink of Stella or a little glitter pen. Just add glitter all over this image. So cute. This would be a great um, little Christmas card uh, for someone that you love. Cut this out, mount it on a card, or put it in a frame, and you will truly make someone's day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.